Welcome to Contracting Conversations. My name is Jim Valley, and I'm joined by my co-host, Scott Williams. Today, we're continuing our conversation with Ms. Tanya Guy-Green, DAU's Property Learning Director and Learning Asset Manager for the Property Credential. Tanya, thank you for being here again. To get us started, let's talk about the credential your team has developed. Okay, so it has a really long title, so get ready. The Industrial Contract Property Management Credential basically provides the foundational knowledge that people need to learn how the contractor is supposed to manage government property, as well as learn the different responsibilities and roles that the government has with respect to um, performing surveillance or providing government property. All of those things that we find in the regulations, as well as the various DOD manuals, DOD instructions and guidebooks. So that's really the type of knowledge that this credential will provide learners with. Hey, Tanya, uh, who would benefit from taking this property credential? Well, you know, obviously those in the 1103 career field would benefit from taking the credential, especially new hires, people who haven't had a chance to get DEWEA certified in property. However, sometimes what we forget about is the 1102s. 1102s can also benefit from taking this credential. For instance, if a procurement contracting officer decides not to delegate the functions of property administration and plant clearance, well, that contracting officer is now going to be responsible for ensuring that those functions get performed. With some respect, even administrative contracting officers should be aware. Another reason that they would benefit from taking this credential is because they are the ones, contracting officers, who are responsible for accepting or disapproving all business systems. And since the contractor's property management system is a business system, they should know what the requirements are and what's being audited and how it impacts the government as a whole. Tanya, can you tell us a little bit more about the makeup of the credential and what it consists of? So the credential consists of four courses. There are three asynchronous online training courses. We've included CLC 11, Contracting for the Rest of Us, Con 0510, Managing Government Property in the Possession of Contractors, and we've included CLM 37, that's Physical Inventories. The fourth course is actually a virtual instructor-led course and that is IND 105V, Contract Property Fundamentals. So, Tanya, that's interesting because that's, you know, a virtual. So can you talk more about how this virtual instruction piece works? Yes. IND 105 is, uh, it's about eight and a half days long. And the virtual course, IND 105, really goes deep into the details it elaborates on CON 0510 because it states specifically what the property administrator's responsibilities are and how they have to be performed. It states specifically what the plant clearance officer's responsibilities are and the laws that affect what they do and how they do it that they have to comply with. But it also talks about how government for property is provided to the contractors, what constitutes government property. So things of that nature. Hey, Tanya, I understand that credentials have an expiration period. In the case of government property, it's going to last for five years. How do I go about renewing my credential once that five-year period is expired? It depends. That's a good DAU answer, right? If we were to, for instance, add another asset, then after that five years, in order to be with that certification or that credential to be renewed, the person would have to take the new class. Or even if we created a new assessment, revised it, whatever the case may be, they would have to take the new one. I don't foresee 
the credential being expanded in any way because it's already approximately 63 hours of commitment time and credentials cannot exceed 80 hours. There is one more situation that might happen. Let's say we revise the courses altogether. In other words, maybe substitute some courses. That's another instance where the person may have to take those courses. So just so they can stay current, because sometimes policies change and that impacts the courseware that we have. Now, if we've changed nothing in the next five years or five years after the person has received their initial credentialing, then maybe all they have to do is review or retake the old assets as well as the existing capstone. All right. Thank you, Tanya. Uh, we appreciate you coming on board to tell us about your credentials and uh, how to go about getting those. So for our site here, that is all for today. So please, if you haven't already, subscribe to our Contracting Conversations channel. Type any comments below to include your questions for future shows and spread the word of this channel to your peers and those you supervise or lead. Let us help you answer their questions. We look forward to having future contracting conversations with you.